Hey guys, today's video is dedicated to mage artifacts, discussing which ones are the very best to use. This video is recorded on the test server, just so you know, it's not the global server nor the Forerunner server. This is a content creator server where they give us a bunch of resources to play around, test and make videos. So I have chosen to use Iona for my testing. The main reason for that is I wanted to use a hero whose skills would not make it awkward to track damage numbers accurately. Every four attacks she does a starburst, sure, but her basic attack is 100% AOE damage, which was very important for the tests and the rest of her effects don't really matter in terms of the damage numbers coming out. I took her to max level max promotions. She has a reasonable base attack of 3.5k and a bonus of 9.3k attack. As for the gear I put her in, it's this same set that you may have seen in some of my other videos. So I've given her the Calamity weapon set for attack bonus. I strongly believe this is the best set other than of course the upgraded version with attack speed added to it. And I've given her a broken set on the right with the accessories just to make it easier to test numbers. And as for the gearing, it's attack and crit rate. I've picked up some crit damage on gear where I can on the bangle here and on some of the subs on this piece, for example. So 98% bonus crit damage, 52% crit rate for the sake of tracking both critical hits and non-critical hits. And as you can see, she has a bonus of nearly 300%, probably closer to 260% in total, including the flat numbers as well. The attack speed doesn't really matter because for the purpose of my testing, I am tracking the crit, non-crit, and just basically single instance damage. I don't care about DPS over time because it's not a reliable way of testing. For my testing, I tracked Skull of Desecration, Tear of Starlight, Ajax's Rage, Blue Sea Ice Ring, Eye of the White Tower, Ominous Hourglass, and Ancestral Teachings. I tracked their crit and non-crit damage for Gear Raid 1, 18, 19, Guild Boss Nightmare 3, and Nightmare 4. I chose these content because Gear Raid 1 is of course the most important content for a mage, so it's the most relevant to know what artifacts to use on, and Guild Boss you do often get mages in there, mainly someone like Nocturne, so I thought I would include that testing as well, just to give you a pretty encompassing idea. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at all of the testing. You're going to see a massive table with loads of data and we're going to go over it together. Here we go. So let me pull this up and make it bigger on the screen. This is the results of all of my testing. So as you can see from this, there are a bunch of different columns and areas that were tested. I tested level one artifacts and I tested them at level 25. I then ranked them based on how they performed at level one in the gear raid one content. So that would be this section here at level one in the guild boss content. So this section here and at level 25 in gear raid one and 25 in guild boss. So that's the results of all the damage. As you can see, tier of starlight is just absolutely crushing it. So if you want a really short video, go build tier of starlight for all of your mages. It's just ridiculous. It's the best artifact hands down easy. That's it. That's all you need to know if you want to know the best artifacts in the game. There are some interesting nuances to the other artifacts and we're going to go over each of those artifacts now and we'll talk through them and it, there are some interesting results. Let's shrink this down again. If you want to see it, you can rewind and go back and find it. But we're going to look at the artifacts that I mentioned on my list and we'll talk through them one by one. So at level one, the best artifact is Tier of Starlight. I mean, it's the best in both categories. But its second competition for Gear Raid 1, if you may have noticed, is Eye of the White Tower, which is a legendary artifact. It is this one right here, Eye of the White Tower. After being deployed, receives one of the following buffs at random, 13% attack or 20 attack speed. Again, this attack bonus will be applying as a max attack bonus. It's kind of like a buff, almost like the inspiration bonuses you get from Dolores, but not actually a buff, so it should stack together. If you saw my previous video where I talked about ancestral teachings, that's why Eye of the White Tower is so good, because it's an attack bonus. Additionally, that is the reason why Tear of Starlight is so darn good, because this is an attack bonus. If you haven't seen the other video, very simply, it's due to the order of operations in the order of how they calculate damage resistance in this game. Simply put, it is the hero's total attack negated by the flat resistance of the enemy, then it is reduced by a fixed percentage that does also vary per enemy, then crit damage is added, then damage bonus is added. So damage bonus is added at the end, that makes crit damage the worst of all of the steps in the calculation. Damage bonus being behind it, but at the very forefront, the best stat is, of course, attack, because otherwise everything else is scaling off of a massively mitigated number. There is one other key component to this formula, which is that if your total damage done would have been reduced below 5%, it instead is set to 4.97%. I don't know why they chose that number, but that is the number. I do have an upgrade to my website, which is either live by the time you're watching this video or coming very soon. My plan is to release it at the very start of September. 
I'm just working on some additional features that will make it more usable. But on this calculator upgrade, you'll be able to select different enemies so that you can see the actual damage results based on the individual enemy resistance. And I'll keep working on calculating and figuring out those enemy resistances so that you can work on more enemies. But yeah, that's a long-winded explanation, but that is why attack is better because the calculation is done in such a way that if you don't have high attack, then your base damage is going to be reduced to like absolutely nothing. And, and then your critical damage and your damage multipliers on top are just going to have almost no effect. So yeah, that's the important thing to know. That is why attack is so dominant. For my testing, just if it wasn't obvious, when using Eye of the White Tower, I kept redeploying Iona until she got the attack bonus. So the numbers that you see in the top are tracked based on having the attack bonus. The attack speed is almost nothing compared to that attack bonus. So Eye of the White Tower, I wouldn't really recommend as an artifact. It's kind of decent because if you can min-max your placements with, you know, just keep retrying until you get the right buff, it's actually not a bad attack bonus. But Tier of the Starlight is, of course, going to be significantly better. And you can even see a single level 1 tier of the Starlight does nearly 12,000 damage to Gear Raid 119. A level 25 Eye of the White Tower is 10.7k. So even an unupgraded tier of Starlight will beat a Eye of the White Tower. Which is hilarious because Eye of the White Tower was actually second on this ranking. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. Even a level 1 tier of Starlight is better than all of the other artifacts in the game <laughs> at level 25 for mages. Which is just a bit insane if you think about it. So yeah. Obviously there is a caveat with tier of Starlight. You have to be at above 80% HP so that you have the 20% attack bonus. But honestly, even at 10% attack bonus, you're still going to be beating almost all of these artifacts. So tier of Starlight hands down is the best. That's the TLDR. Uh, it's going to be the case everywhere in the game because of how the formula works. Just some other interesting artifacts to go over. We'll just go over them one by one so I can explain why they are scoring a certain way. The next big one that we all thought was the best was Skull of Desecration. 25% AoE damage and at max level is a whopping 35% damage bonus. So you think, well, surely Skull of Desecration should be much better. Well, it's comparing to 30% attack. So previously, we had 25% damage versus 20% attack. So there's a 5% difference, but the numbers are lower, right? Now it's still a 5% difference, 30% attack and 35% AOE damage, but the numbers are now higher. So although it's a fixed 5% difference between the numbers, they're both higher. So the percentage difference between those two artifacts has shrunk massively. Pair that with the fact that attack is just massively better as a stat than damage is. Well, then you see why Skull of Desecration is getting absolutely crushed by the tier of Starlight. So Skull of Desecration, unfortunately, is not a very good artifact. Okay, okay I, it's not bad. It's just compared to Tier of Starlight, it kind of sucks. But actually, Skull of Desecration is actually doing pretty good. It only loses to Eye of White Tower. And the reason Eye of the White Tower wins is because of the attack stuff. And you need the jankiness with getting the attack bonus up. So I would prefer a Skull of Desecration over an Eye of the White Tower. But again, I would strongly recommend against investing in making a level 25 Skull of Desecration when you can just use tier of starlight because it's 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 just better like even a level one tier of starlight beats a skull of desecration because maths but yeah that's my recommendation tier of starlight as i've said then next up to discuss is ajax's rage again i'm just focusing on gear raid one at the moment we'll go over guild boss in a second but for now we'll talk about gear raid one although the conclusions are pretty much the same ajax's rage as i said earlier it's applied midway so it's applied after you've had your attack cut down by the enemy's defense but it's applied before the damage bonus, the damage bonus is all encompassing, it applies at the end. So crit damage is actually worse than those two in terms of what you want from an artifact. Crit damage is the lowest priority, but that is why it has the highest value. It's 45% crit damage versus 30% attack or 35% damage. However, even at 45% crit damage, it's just not good enough. We're not seeing a very good return here. It is lower than Skull of Desecration in both of level one and level 25 tests. And when we get to the guild boss results, you'll see that's the same. You can, of course, test this again however you want with different heroes, with higher base attack, higher crit damage. You know, it can maybe things change with Dolores involved. I strongly doubt it personally. The trend that you should notice or the main takeaway from this is the further into the game you go, the higher the stage level, level 19 to 21, the higher the enemy resistance, massively so, as you will see in my marksman video I'll be working on. And that means that anything scaling on crit damage is going to be significantly worse if you're choosing this over getting attack bonus. So I strongly recommend attack bonus over crit damage. It's just not even really a competition. 
Next we have Blue Sea Ice Ring. This was recently changed to grant a damage bonus. 10% at level 1 and 15% at level 25. It does actually slow. So I'm not saying it's bad. This has other effects to it that might make it good if you want to use it for CC. I actually enjoyed this in the past on Zealus as he applies so many AoE effects and rapid ticks in AoE. It does now have an internal cooldown of 4 seconds though. But if we're measuring it purely on damage, which is the purpose of this video, it is not very good and it's actually one of the worst performing artifacts out of the bunch. Next up we have Eye of the White Tower, which we discussed already. Then we have Ominous Hourglass. Ominous Hourglass really sucks, apparently. So if we go to the level 1 version, you'll see that it grants you 1% AoE damage, stacking up to 3 times and it lasts for 3 seconds. So it's 3% AoE damage. 3% damage is crap. It's really low. So even though this was a fairly newly added legendary artifact, it's really rubbish. It doesn't scale very well. The damage isn't great. And if you look at my level 1 testing, Ominous Hourglass came out on the bottom by a long way. And I tested this at max stacks, just so you know, where possible, I'm testing the artifacts at max stacks. So this is 3 stacks on Ominous Hourglass and it's 7th. Critting for 4.9k in gear raid 119, compared to the next bottom up, which would actually be Ancestral Teachings at 6.6k. The epic artifact at level 1 is actually comparing well. And actually, if you look at it, the epic artifact at level 1 is beating Ominous Hourglass at level 25, which is very embarrassing. So yeah, there you have it. That's my take on Ominous Hourglass, and if you look at level 25, it is 3% and it stacks up to 7 times. That should be way better, right? You should That should actually be quite good, that's like 21% damage bonus. Well, it really wasn't that good, unfortunately. It did improve a bit, but 21% is still not cutting it, and perhaps I wasn't able to get it to max stacks. I am using... Iona, the reason I'm using Iona, if, if I didn't mention this earlier, is because she deals AoE damage. That allows me to test Skull of Desecration, that allows me to test Ominous Hourglass. That's the reason I picked her. So yeah, at level 25, 21% damage bonus, it's just not very good. You're also not getting the stat bonuses that you would get if you were using some of the other artifacts. Even a level 1 Skull of Desecration is 25% AoE damage, it's 4% more and it doesn't require getting stacks in short windows on so many targets. So Ominous Hourglass is really a poor artifact. And finally Ancestral Teachings. You may have seen my video discussing Ancestral Teachings already and I think this is just really really good. You can see at level 1 it doesn't quite compare very well to most of these artifacts. However, when you take it to level 25, and you compare it to probably what is going to be a level 10 artifact, it crushes Skull of Desecration, Ajax's Rage, Blue Sea Ice Ring, even Eye of the White Tiver when it's got the attack bonus. It crushes Ominous Hourglass by nearly double. The only one that Ancestral Teachings is losing out to is Tear of Starlight, because it's 20% attack. Of course, it's going to be 16% attack. So yeah, I do think that the Ancestral Teachings is a really good artifact, for mages though, Tear of Starlight all the way. Tear of Starlight is very, very good. It's going to be the best artifact for mages, hands down. No competition. Tear of Starlight is going to be absolutely dominant. Anyway, those are the artifacts I use for the testing. Let me pull this back up again and we'll look at some of the more of the numbers and we'll see some comparisons. So we'll look at the guild boss now. The reason I did these separately is if you look at the base numbers, if we look at the top row here, no artifact. This is my kind of acid test so I can get a gauge for resistances. The non-crit damage was 1.9k on Gear Raid 118, 1.6k on Gear Raid 119, but on Guild Boss Nightmare 3, 4.8k and Nightmare 4, 4k. So Nightmare 4 has significantly less resistance than the Giant Shielder in Gear Raid 118. Just so you know, Guild Boss does actually take a bit more damage from magic than he does from physical. It's something you'll probably notice if you use my calculator in future, and I will do a more detailed breakdown video on how the damage formulas work. But this video is of course focused on mages. So the important thing from this is that Guild Boss has quite a lot less resistance than the Gear Raid 1 content does. And what that tends to mean is that attack becomes less valuable. The main reason attack is so dominant in Gear Raid 1 and generally in most content is because you need to overcome the massive resistance of the enemies. That's why we have such a cavernous gap between Tier of Starlight and basically everything else when we're looking into Gear Raid 1. It's because the resistance is so high on the enemies. When we go to Guild Boss, now it's it's still winning. I mean, Tier of Starlight is still dominating. It's at 16,000 damage on level 1, on Nightmare 4, versus 14,000 of Skull of Desecration. If we go to level 25, it's 20,000 versus 17,000 of Skull of Desecration. So Skull of Desecration, it's the best artifact if you go by what you would assume to be logic. 
you know it's got a higher damage increase it should be better right it also has more drawbacks it's got uh, more damage taken and it can only be used on aoe mages so for a long time we assumed this was the best mage artifact on that principle and i think if you were fighting enemies with no resistance that would be the case skull of desecration would be the best but with the way resistances are calculated currently tier of starlight is the best mage artifact and it's mirrored across the lower resist guild boss runs versus the gear raid one with the higher resist it's still the case the resistance is still high enough that that does work out that way and again because guild boss has lower resistance you can see that the ancestral teachings is now performing quite a bit worse it's now ranked sixth rather than fourth at level 25 but besides that there's not really many upsets eye of the white tower gets pushed to number three as skull of desecration pulls up and everything else stays in roughly the same position barring that movement so yeah that's uh, pretty much it that's what i wanted to show you those are the numbers from my testing again as a summary i strongly recommend tier of starlight at level one it beats every other artifact pretty much of course if you're going to level 25 and you're using them in lower resistance content such as guild boss then some of the other artifacts do have a good chance of beating it but they do need to be maxed pretty much so the only context or content in where tier of starlight is not the best mage artifact it's when you're using a level 25 skull of desecration and you're comparing it to a tier of starlight at level one that's insane so yeah all you need to know is that the best artifact for mages in the game is hands down the tier of starlight the bonus attack is just too important with the formula after that comes skull of desecration pretty much the most reliable for sure although eye of the white tower actually performed well it performed well in very unrealistic scenarios i was having to make sure that i got the procs in the runs to ensure that it was gaining that damage bonus ancestral teachings i do really like this artifact and i'm actually building them now if you do have access to tier of starlight they're not worth using and skull of desecration is better than it as well most of the time but even still ancestral teachings is a very good artifact and you'll see it more for the other classes that don't have as much access to such high multipliers of tier of starlight or skull of desecration but bear in mind that is only usable on aoe mages anyway that's all i wanted to cover this video if you have any questions feel free to leave them below i hope to see you guys in the next one have a great day take care and bye bye